Now you're very welcome back to the programme. We're joined on it now by Paul uh, Diddler uh, Dylan. Good morning to you, Paul. Good morning, Greg. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Ah, good, Greg. Good, good. Okay. Uh, people will know you as a former GA football player and coach. Uh, you're battling motor neuron disease. And you, I mean, must have been overwhelmed going back uh, the, a couple of weeks or months now uh, to the community reaction uh, to, to your situation. Um, it's, you, do, you just wonder if anywhere else like Donegal could do something like that. It must have been just overwhelming, Paul. Oh, it was, Greg. It was just for our family, like, just to see so many people back here. Like, it was unbelievable. It was just overwhelming, like, and it just gave us a great love, which we badly needed, like, at the time, because as everything went on, like, as you know yourself, mm-hmm. we went through a tough time at Christmas, and it was just so great to see the community rallying around, and then to get this news then, like, it's, I just think it's total disgrace, like, on the GAA, like, they even think, like, just a bit of common sense would prevail, I know rules are rules, but like a, just a wee bit of common sense, you know. It, it's, it would be a real shame if these players, these senior players, all of them, in fact, face this eight-week eight ban. I mean, it's it's not, it hasn't been enforced, it hasn't been handed down, it's been recommended. The argument being, of course, the rules are rules, foreign sports and all that shenanigans. But given, you know... I mean, even more recently, what the community has been through, given the community reaction, Paul, to, to what you're going through, if there any ever was a time to sort of say, right, we'll not pursue this, this is it, is that how you feel? Yeah, I do. That's how I feel exactly, Greg. Like, no, it had nothing to do with the name of Colin Kill Club, like, at all. Like, it was just a few of lads that I run about with all my life, like, just got together on the stay and just said they'd try and raise a few pounds because I'm getting renovations done to my house to suit my mobility and like we thought this would never come to this like it's just I think it's just ridiculous really you know like the much work that that community has put in to your fundraising thing and like they were brilliant it's like for a little village like Newton Cunningham they like we raised the 5,000 for me like you know it's just unreal and for this to happen then, like, it's just a kick in the teeth, really, for our family. And, and maybe if, may, I don't know what, I know that, I don't know the internet, but maybe permission was asked for a non-GA event and there's ways and means around and maybe at that time it could have, the question could have been asked in a different way and uh, people may have turned a blind eye, but we are where we are. I mean, is it a case, do you feel that, that, that this was brought to the county board's attention and they had no alternative then to investigate it or is this something that they uh, decided to take upon themselves? No, well, as far as I'm aware, Greg, it was reported to the county board, like, no, they investigated. As far as I'm aware now, they were writing letters under the county board. Some, I don't know who, like, but somebody was writing letters to investigate this. And this I think that department. person needs to maybe have a look at themselves this morning. I'm not... I'm not yeah. I wouldn't wish anyone, 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 no. anything bad because literally that would go against the whole spirit of this whole thing and, and none of us would. But... Um, to put pen to paper, uh, metaphorically or literally, and to sort of bring this to attention and, and to an extent sort of leave the county board in a position where they have to sort of follow through on it and enforce the law, you could argue in their defence, I suppose, that yeah. person maybe needs to say, you know, maybe I did the wrong thing here and I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, all they do, like, no, like, I know rules are rules, like, in the GA, I understand that, like, the, something like this, like, you know, it's just a bit of common sense, like, no. Yeah. Like, as I said, if them people had to come and see how I get through everyday life at the minute, they just may change their mind on that. And how how, how are you, Paul, in, in, in your battle with this uh, awful, awful disease? I will, to be honest, Greg, at the start, it was very hard. Like, we hadn't a great Christmas, like, mm. just got the diagnosis around Christmas time. It's just the second of January, but I knew kind of what was coming, and, like, you were worried over Christmas, and... Like we had to stay strong for three years, like you know, yeah. and I just I think the spirit of them on Christmas morning just got us through it for that day. But then after that, you just 
kind of went down hill again and you were just you didn't want to see nobody if you know what I mean. hundred percent. Yeah, and just me and my wife, it was about a month before we came even came out of the house like the face people, you know, you just didn't but then as it went on it got easier, like, you know what yeah, I just said to myself, right, um we gotta get out here. I can't sit in the house all day feeling sorry for myself. Like, no, I need to get out there and meet the people that I know and but it was hard at the start, but once I got I went to my local Kiernan's Eurospar where I worked there as a butcher for 10 years like and some great friends there and still go to see them every day I go there for my lunch with the other butcher John Tunney there every day so I'm, I'm trying to keep positive Greg as That's much it. as I can and I was on a wheelchair or I'm on the wheelchair now at the moment mm-hmm. which was a great help to me like no I can get out and about as before like we were just maybe me and my wife and the girls would go shopping. I would just have to sit in the car. Was that a big sort of leap for you to sort of say, right, it, it, it's a wheelchair from now on, if you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, it was great. Yeah. I, I didn't really want to get on that. Because that you know, was the next stage, I suppose, in your yeah, mind, was wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it always was coming. Like, it yeah. was coming. Like, I was on crutches before, but I, to be honest, I kept falling and I feared then that I was going to end up breaking something yeah, yeah, and see. put myself back. No. But you kind of get the feeling once once I make this decision, that's me off yeah. the crutches, and that's sort that's of a, yeah, yeah, I get you. It's a and tough then I was one. kind of dreading going meeting people on the wheelchair, but once I got the same first time, like out and about, and like everybody's just so good, like yeah, of course, like, yeah. and Newton's just unbelievable. And further I feel like no people yeah. have just helped, and it, it's just unbelievable response, like because you can feel very when you get a bad news or or a bad diagnosis. It, it's it's incredibly lonely, you know, and you yeah. you, you feel like the only person. I mean, you're lucky to have a, a beautiful and supportive wife, but it's it's a very lonely space, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it is. Like it is unbelievable. Because right? you don't feel anyone can understand you. You know, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm. That's right. That's exactly because that's what my wife said. Like, no, nobody understands. Just no, they need to be there in our house to see if we're going through every day. You know. Like, see, trying to get the bed upstairs, like, it was just a nightmare. Like, I could have left the sitting room. It could have took me 15 minutes to get the bed. If, and it was just awful. Like, and it was a lot of stress on my wife, too. And finally, then we got our bed moved downstairs. So it's not handier now. Like, Good stuff. you just back in the wheelchair in a couple of seconds, you're in bed. Like, no one... Just like they say to my wife, with, only without her, like I would be lost hey, on the family. There's and I would say she'd say that. Woman. I'd say she'd say this exact same thing back at your palm. Ah, she's such a great woman. Like no, she puts up on me all this <laughs> orders every time. <laughs> 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 She's kind of fed up, I think, but no. no, no I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, how are the renovations going uh, now? Uh, the renovations is going very well, right. Greg. They're just finishing the slates on the roof here now at the moment, just so we hope to be moved in by June, if all going to plan. Brilliant. Okay, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and and it's it's important to get that background too, Paul, because the ne- one of the other stages of sort of, you know, processing all of this and getting out there and all of that and not feeling that isolation was this unbelievable response from from the community now, and i can only imagine what that must have meant uh to to you and your family you know that that it it, it wasn't just you at five if you know what i mean it was actually everybody and it, did you must have got great comfort from that when it just was needed oh definitely great that's was unbelievable like brilliant like that's just what we needed really to get out like you know it just give us initiative to get out there right no these people's right behind us here like it's just unbelievable like because we had a held a 5k they held a 5k for me like a 1300 people turned up at it like that's unbelievable isn't it unbelievable like and this guy from dublin came the whole way down from dublin like i run along with him in the dublin marathon Mm. for a while like and I didn't even know him. Like I just, he just said that I ran along with you in the Dublin Marathon. That was two years ago. Like, and it's just unbelievable. He came down to the five k as well. Like, and no, it's just it's those things, hard. isn't it? So yeah, those I things like, that mean so much. Like a lot of the 
runners had I had to run against, like oh, everybody in that day turned up like people I never expected to see. Like no, we just. Uh, how was that though? I mean, could, 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 were were you able to handle? It? I think I would be sort of like, oh no, listen, this isn't all for me, lads. Come on, that day. yeah. I was very emotional. That right, day, I'd yeah. imagine, yeah. Because I just said to my wife, I should be up there to start laying with my watch, oh, like you know. Oh. No, but I was just emotional. And then I was coming through the crowd. They moved back because I was starting the race, and they clapped me the whole way through my crutches, like, and I just, it was unbelievable. Oh. I'll never forget it. Like, no, it's just such a big crowd and I'd just like to thank everybody who turned up on that day it was unbelievable yeah you'll never forget that, yeah. that. now just to, to then part of that as well was uh, a few players from from the local club where you were an underage coach they took part in a seven aside match on what is a former soccer pitch what is leased to the GEA as far as I'm aware it's 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 it's, it's a community facility I believe but they do use it for training it was a once off event uh one way or other, the county board became aware of this and they've had to sort of follow the rule of the law. If we've learned nothing from sort of the Liam Miller situation, uh, we should learn from it. And I think, as you say, when you've you've spoke so passionately about the, the community and these senior football players or amateurs, they're in the community, they shouldn't have to. And someone has to make the decision, don't they, Paul, to make sure that these people do not suffer uh, any suspensions in doing oh, what they love yeah definitely Greg like that like it has to be like somebody has to just get a bit of sense and just see they can get this overturned like it just very, like I coached a lot of them guys and that senior team would you believe it under age like from under 12 it's just no and to see them going through all them years like and great players they are like no and they were just tiny wee Thoughts, as you would say, like when I was coaching them, like which I enjoyed every minute of it. Like, and like I've had a lot of work under the GA myself, like when I was 15 years, like coaching and one thing and another. Like, and it's just very sad just mm. to see them players just go. And I think yeah. someone needs to make a decision soon. No one wants this yeah. hanging over the community. No one wants no. your your situation, the community, the GEA club, uh, you know, under the national spotlight for all the wrong reasons. We should be talking about everything. That's why I wanted to spend so much time with you, Paul, talking about the fantastic yeah. stuff that happened. Because not, you know, I, I think you'll, you'll probably be on national stations later and they need yeah. to understand that, not they need to understand, but they won't get... The, the absolute positivity of it. I'm sure you will say it, but you know where I'm coming from, Paul? Yeah, yeah it, it, it shouldn't be taken away from, from what was just the most amazing thing. Paul, listen, thank you so much. Uh, I'm yeah. Our text machine is on fire with people uh, sending their yeah. best wishes, telling you that the whole yeah. community is uh, behind yeah. you, that this, oh, none of this is your fault, all of that oh. stuff, Paul. Uh, oh, no, Greg. No problem. Thank all right, listen, thanks very much, Greg, Paul. It's lovely chatting to you. You thank too. You very much. Great all stuff, right, Paul. Bye. Thanks bye. so much. Bye. That's Paul Diddler. Dylan there, um, the man the fundraiser uh, was in aid of. And you've heard his story there and uh, everything they've been going through in those dark days not that long ago. Uh, and it's still obviously a, a massive battle and a battle uh, no better than uh, Diddler to, to uh, take on. But someone needs to make a decision and draw a line under this. I mean, 